All right, let's have one of those philosophical talks or pseudo philosophical or wannabe philosophical, whatever you want to call that. Just a bit of a ramble about the topic of violence. Now, some people, when they see some of my videos on the channel, jump to the conclusion that I must be a violent person and I'm about to snap and go on a killing spree or something like that. Now, of course, that's prejudiced, it's ignorant, it's stupid, quite frankly. However, I mean, there is an obvious link between weapons and violence. That's what they are designed for. I mean, you have weapons in order to you know, overpower somebody, incapacitate them, you know, otherwise end a conflict or in some cases start a conflict. But violence in and of itself is neutral. I mean, it depends on the context, it depends on the intent, and so on and so forth. There is obviously quite a bit of difference between, you know, just walking up to a random person in the street and cracking them over the head with a baseball bat just for giggles. I mean, that's, that's a pretty low form of violence, you know, morally low. And then there is, you know, what police officers do when they apprehend a suspect in a robbery or assault and you know whatever else so in either case it's violence and if you think about it society overall is largely built on violence for better or worse i generally say for worse but that's kind of the human condition i mean if you really think about it what prevents people from just doing whatever the heck they want, taking whatever they want from anybody, you know, um, you know, taking possession of what is not theirs and otherwise randomly causing trouble or even killing others and, and so on, you know, using violence to their own benefit, to their own gains. What's preventing that? Ultimately, violence. I mean, yes, you can say laws. But laws in and of themselves don't do anything. Laws are just ideas. So what enforces the law? Violence. When it all boils down to it. I mean, it can even be trivial things. Like, your neighbor just blasts loud music in the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep. And you, know, you have to get up in the, early in the morning and you have to rest to be able to function, you know, to earn money and make a living and, and survive. And that callous douchebag just doesn't care. And, you know, you talk to him and whatever, fuck you, man, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. You know, that kind of belligerent, obnoxious scumbag, quite frankly. And you can't negotiate with them. You can't do anything. They won't listen. They will just continue with that. Now, what can you do? You can move, <laughs> but that's not a great option, and you may or may not be able to do that. Otherwise, what can you do? Well, you can call the police. So if police officers go over there and then tell them, hey, look, sir, you, you can't do this, you have to, you know, be mindful of the other residents here, and etc., etc., and he just doesn't care and just insults them and, no, oh, what are you going to do? Whatever, what, what, the, what can they do? I mean, ultimately, they have to use violence at some point, right? Because you cannot, if you can't reason with that person, that's the only thing left to do. Now, there are extreme pacifists, or actually, there's a better word for that. It, I can't think of it right now, but basically people who refuse to use violence under any circumstance whatsoever like even if they're threatened even if their life is being threatened they will refuse to fight and use violence you know per definition because they think violence is always morally wrong and all of that but the problem i see with that is i mean it's it's their choice of course they can do with their life whatever the heck they want and if that's their decision and they want to suffer for it if the situation requires okay whatever it's, it's there decision right but i actually think that it's it's basically shoving responsibility away from themselves and pushing it onto others because they're then expecting somebody else to do the dirty work for them you know even if it's if, if they have good intentions 
and it's their moral decision and all of that, they're relying on somebody else to use the violence to, you know, bring that troublemaker under control or even worse, that murderer, and prevent them from going on a rampage and whatever, and, and you know, taking lives. So, you know, ultimately, somebody's got to do it. To bring in a bit of fiction for comparison, take that whole Batman-Joker dynamic. It's this kind of problem. Batman, or at least in some versions, has the moral principle of not killing, no matter what. And the Joker does it you know, with a passion all the time. And lots of people die all the time. And he just keeps bringing him back into Arkham and he keeps breaking back out and does the same things over and over again. Now, this may not be the greatest comparison because obviously Batman is using violence. It's just not lethal force. But we've got the responsibility to dimension again. So... He brings him in, the Joker brings him to Arkham or whatever, and at that point it's no longer his responsibility. Somebody else needs to take responsibility to, you know, make sure he doesn't get out, or if, if it just keeps happening, at some point you may have to consider, you know, regardless of whether or not you're in favor of the death penalty, usually, if it's such an extreme case, at some point you may have to wonder, is this the only option we have left? You know, that, that sort of thing. So... It really depends heavily on the situation, you know, what's what's at stake, who's involved, and so on. Violence can be positive, can be very positive. In fact, and quite often it's it's the only thing standing between civilization and chaos, if you will. And personally, I don't think it's good how many people are basically in denial about violence. At least that's what I would call it, where they you know, kind of reject violence completely and just try to act as if it has absolutely no place in civilization and it's always a supreme evil and, you know, this is not a violent society and all that. And, you know, in some ways it's not, but in other ways it absolutely is because we're human. And humans, by default, by nature, and no matter what they do, at least in this stage of evolution, they are still violent things. We're still violent animals to a large extent. Even if we you know, take all kinds of measures to mitigate that and, and then have our rules and all of that, ultimately, what enforces the rules and what makes sure that we, we you know don't fall apart and descend into complete <laughs> maniacal homicidal chaos violence of course it's dangerous because we're not fully rational beings we are well there's the concept of bounded rationality in psychology we're only rational to a certain extent within some limits and our emotional side is always threatening to take over and make us do uh, no, not so responsible things at times and there's always this you know, teetering on the brink of the abyss, to put it in very dramatic terms so using violence always has that kind of risk because things aren't always as clear cut as in the movies or comics where you see, oh that's the villain, let's fight them it's uh in some cases, you may jump to wrong conclusions, you know. How many cases are there of self-defense where somebody shot another person because they, they found them suspicious or they felt threatened or whatever, and then afterwards it turns out that person was, you know, unarmed, uh, was just minding their own business, was not trying to attack them and all of that. It's, um, it's difficult. I mean, life overall is difficult. It's complex. Things aren't black and white, even though a lot of people would like them to be. But, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. But I don't think we're ready yet to discard violence entirely. Maybe we'll get there eventually, sometime, someplace. But until then... <laughs> and if I wanted to twist this into a political agenda at the end, I would say, and this is why self-defense should not be illegal, and why people should be allowed to carry weapons for their protection and all that, but I mean, I just said it, but 
it's not really the kind of message I want to leave you with because I know that a lot of people have an issue with that and a lot of them argue that, you know, this, this leads to problems because exactly of what I mentioned earlier that we are partially irrational and emotional and we, we get into, you know, hot-blooded fights and when there are weapons involved it, it gets even worse. And other people say, yeah, but it, it's less likely to escalate when there are weapons involved. It's it's hard to say. There aren't many studies on the topic, and it's I don't think we have really good conclusive data at this point. You know, people on either side of the argument think so, think there is a point to it. But if you take a closer look, then it's it's often more ambivalent and not quite as clear cut. Anyway, I should probably end this here before it gets all too tangential and rambly. Thanks for watching.